Jochebed, the mother of Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, stands as one of the unsung heroines in the Bible. Her story may not occupy a vast amount of text, but her actions speak volumes about her character, faith, and the incredible role she played in the salvation of Israel. We're going to explore the qualities of Jochebed in the Bible and what we can learn from her life. Through the lens of both Christian and Jewish traditions, we'll uncover her remarkable courage, her unwavering faith, and her deep wisdom, qualities that continue to inspire believers today. Welcome to the Worth Beyond Rubies podcast. I'm your host, Diane Ferreira, a Messianic Jew and founder of Worth Beyond Rubies, a site dedicated to Christians seeking to deepen their faith through both the Jewish and Christian insights. So join me as we explore our faith through both a Messianic Jewish and Christian lens, offering fresh perspectives and spiritual depth to your walk with God. So let's get started. So we're going to take a biblical overview of Jochebed and her role in the Bible. She's first introduced in the book of Exodus, and though her story is brief, it's filled with significance. She was a Levite, a member of the tribe set apart for service to God, which immediately places her in a context of spiritual importance. The Bible tells us that she married Amram, who was also from the Levites, and became the mother of three important figures, Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Exodus 2, 1 to 10 tells the story of Jacobit's courageous act to save her infant son, Moses, from Pharaoh's decree to drown every Hebrew male child in the Nile. So she hid Moses for three months, and when she couldn't keep him hidden any longer, crafted a basket from papyrus, waterproofed it with tar and pitch, and placed it among the reeds of the Nile River. So this act of placing him in the river was not just an act of desperation, but a profound expression of trust in God's will. To fully appreciate the qualities of Jochebed, we need to dive deeper into the circumstances that surrounded the birth of Moses and the extraordinary steps she took to save him. The Israelites had been living in Egypt for several generations since the time of Joseph. Over time, they had grown in number and strength, becoming a significant population within Egypt. The new pharaoh, who the Bible says did not know Joseph in Exodus 1.8, felt threatened by their presence. So to curb their growth and their potential power, he enslaved the Israelites and subjected them to harsh labor. When this suppression didn't diminish their numbers, Pharaoh resorted to a more brutal measure. He commanded that all Hebrew male infants be killed at birth. The Torah records in Exodus one twenty two, Then Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, You are to cast every son that is born into the river, but let every daughter live. This decree was a direct attempt to weaken the Hebrew people by cutting off their future generations. Jochebed gave birth to Moses during this dangerous time. Jochebed must have been filled with anxiety and fear during her pregnancy. She knew that if her baby was a boy, his life would be in grave danger. When Moses was born, the Torah describes him as a fine child in Exodus 2.2. The Hebrew word here, used here, rather, is tov, which means good or beautiful, suggesting not just a physical beauty, but a sense of something divinely special about the child. This language echoes the creation narrative where God saw all he created and called it tov, good. Jochebed's recognition of Moses' specialness was not just a mother's instinct, but a spiritual insight, seeing something of God's divine purpose in her newborn son. For three months, Jochebed managed to hide Moses, Imagine the tension and fear she must have felt every single day. A newborn's cry could easily give them away, and the consequences would have been disastrous. But Jochebed and her family chose to trust in God rather than to give in to fear. Her actions were a profound act of faith in God's purpose for Moses. When it became impossible to keep him hidden any longer, Jochebed devised a plan that was both bold and creative. She created 
the basket, which is described as an ark, or teva in Hebrew, connecting the story to the narrative of Noah's ark, another vessel of salvation that protected its occupants from the waters of chaos and destruction. This parallel is rich in symbolism. Just as Noah's Ark preserved humanity through the flood, so Jochebed's Ark would preserve the future deliverer of Israel. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Jochebed's decision to place Moses in the Nile was not some desperate act of abandonment, but it was a calculated risk. The Nile River, a symbol of life in Egypt, was ironically the place of potential death because of Pharaoh's decree. Yet Jochebed placed Moses among the reeds along the bank of the river, which was a strategic location where she knew that Pharaoh's daughter would come to bathe. By placing Moses in the Nile, Jochebed was putting her trust in God's care. She may have known the Egyptian princess had a compassionate heart, or at least hoped that seeing a helpless Hebrew baby would stir her compassion rather than make her follow her father's cruel orders. Miriam, Moses' older sister, stood off at a distance to watch over the basket ready to intervene if necessary, and this move indicates Jacobet's thorough planning and wisdom. She didn't just leave Moses to fate, she took every possible measure to ensure his safety. God's hand is clearly seen in what happens next. Pharaoh's daughter came to bathe at the river and noticed the basket among the reeds. When she opened it and saw the crying baby, her heart was moved with compassion. Despite knowing he was a Hebrew child, she decided to adopt him, saying, this is one of the Hebrew children in Exodus 2.6. Miriam, showing quick thinking and courage, stepped forward and offered to find a Hebrew woman, she just happened to know one, to nurse the baby. When the princess agreed, Miriam went to get her own mother, Jochebed, who was then given the opportunity to nurse and care for her own son under the protection of Pharaoh's household. This arrangement not only ensured Moses' survival, but also allowed Jochebed to instill in him his Hebrew identity and knowledge of the God of Israel during his formative years. This story shows how human actions and God's plan work together. Jochebed's faith, courage, and careful planning were met with God's care. Placing Moses in the Nile wasn't about giving up. It was a deep act of faith trusting God to take care of her son's future. Her faith was rewarded in a way she never could have imagined. Not only was Moses saved, but he was also raised in Pharaoh's own household, getting the best education and training, all while staying connected to his roots. Now let's look at Jochebed in Jewish tradition. Names in the Bible are often significant, and Jochebed's is no exception. Her name, Yochebed, means Adonai is glory, or the glory of Adonai. This is notable because Jochebed is the first person in the Bible whose name contains a reference to the divine name. This indicates not just a personal piety, but a life that is intertwined with the glory and purposes of God. Jewish tradition provides even more depth to our understanding of Jochebed. In the Midrash, a form of rabbinic literature that explores the deeper meanings of biblical texts, Jochebed is portrayed as a woman of incredible wisdom and spiritual insight. According to one tradition, she was among the midwives mentioned earlier in Exodus 1, Shifra and Pua, who defied Pharaoh's orders to kill the Hebrew male infants. Whether or not she was one of the midwives, the tradition highlights her association with acts of faith and defiance against unjust orders driven by a higher allegiance to God's law. Another midrash tells us that Jochebed was 130 years old when Moses was born, yet God restored her youthfulness so that she could nurse Moses herself. This story underscores the miraculous nature of Moses' birth and God's special favor upon Jochebed. It also speaks to her perseverance and dedication, even in her advanced years, reinforcing her qualities of faithfulness and resilience. Now, the sages also taught that Pharaoh had an additional motive for wanting the Israelite males killed, and I agree with them. 
They explained that his astrologers had predicted the birth of a deliverer for the Jewish people, prompting Pharaoh to to order the killing of all newborn boys. This mirrors the events surrounding the birth of another deliverer, Yeshua, who came to save all the nations of the earth. Jacobed's courage is not just about a physical act of hiding Moses, but also about her ability to maintain hope in a seemingly hopeless situation. Imagine the fear of hiding a crying infant from Egyptian soldiers. Yet she did it. Day after day, week after week, her courage challenges us today to be bold in our faith, to stand up against injustices, and to protect the vulnerable even when it requires great personal risk. Faith is a cornerstone of Jacobed's story. The Bible doesn't tell us she had a detailed plan for Moses' future, only that she trusted God with the outcome. Hebrews 11.23 says, By faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents, because they saw he was an extraordinary child, and they were not afraid of the king's decree. This passage highlights Jacobed's faith as an act of defiance against the powers that sought to destroy her family. It teaches us that faith often involves stepping out in trust, even when we don't see the whole picture. Jacobed's wisdom shines through in how she handled her difficult situation. Her plan to place Moses in the Nile using a basket that would float positioned him to be found by Pharaoh's daughter, a move that seems almost divinely orchestrated. Her actions reflect a deep understanding of human nature and the workings of her environment. In the same way, we're called to use wisdom and discernment in our daily decisions, combining our faith with practical actions. Now, let's look at Jacobed's nurturing and influence as a mother. Even though Moses was raised in Pharaoh's palace, Jacobed's early influence on him was deep and lasting. She likely instilled in him a sense of Hebrew identity and a knowledge of the God of Israel that remained with him throughout his life. When Moses fled Egypt and encountered God at the burning bush in Exodus 3, he responded not as an Egyptian prince, but as an Israelite, aware of his people's suffering. This reflects the deep spiritual and cultural foundation Jacobed must have laid in his early years. For parents today, Jacobed's story is a reminder of the vital role we play in shaping our children's faith and their identity. The early years are critical, and the lessons we teach them can have a lasting impact, even in environments that might seem spiritually hostile. So let's look at the legacy of Jacobed and the lessons that she has for today's mothers. First, we'll look at her impact on Moses and the future of Israel. Jacobed's influence extended far beyond her immediate family. Moses became one of the greatest prophets and leaders in history. Aaron became the first high priest of Israel, and Miriam was a prophetess who led the women in worship. Jacobet's faith and courage directly contributed to their development and leadership. Her story reminds us that our actions, particularly those that are rooted in faith and love, can have a profound impact on future generations. She has enduring lessons from modern parents. Her story offers timeless lessons. She teaches us to be courageous in the face of fear, to have unwavering faith in God's promises, and to use wisdom in navigating difficult decisions and situations. Her life is a testament to the power of nurturing and the lasting impact a faithful parent can have on their children. Both Jewish and Christian traditions, I can't talk today, (laughs) both Jewish and Christian traditions both recognize Jacobed as a model of faith and courage, but they offer unique insights into her story. Jewish interpretations typically often focus on her role within the broader narrative of Israel's corporate deliverance and her actions as expressions of emuna and bitachon. Muna being faith and bitachon trust. Christian perspectives tend to emphasize her personal trust in God's providence and her ability, or I should say her example of godly parenting. 
Both views are important and both enrich our understanding and appreciation of her character and her actions. Looking at Jacobin's story from both Jewish and Christian perspectives can deepen our faith and our understanding. Her life shows how learning from both traditions can give us a richer view of biblical figures and the lessons that they teach. Now, Jacobin shares many qualities with other notable women in the Bible. While each of these women faced different challenges and circumstances, they are united by their faith, their courage, and wisdom. Faith in uncertain times is the first thing we're going to look at. Jacobin's unwavering faith demonstrated in her courageous decision to hide Moses and place him in the Nile echoes the faith of other biblical women. Consider Hannah, who prayed fervently for a child and then dedicated her son Samuel to God's service. Both Jacobin and Hannah placed their trust in God's plan even when the future seemed uncertain. Likewise, Sarah, the mother of Isaac, trusted in God's promise to make her a mother of nations despite her old age. These women's stories remind us that faith often requires us to trust in God's timing, not our own, and his purposes, even when we don't see the immediate outcome. Then there's her courage to act. Jacobid's boldness in defying Pharaoh's order to kill Hebrew male infants mirrors the courage of other biblical heroines. Deborah, a prophetess and judge of Israel, displayed similar bravery by leading her people into battle against their oppressors. Likewise, Jael showed extraordinary courage when she killed the enemy general Sisera to deliver Israel. These women's actions required a deep sense of purpose and a willingness to take risks for the sake of God's people. Jacobed's story, like those of Deborah and Jael, inspire us to act boldly and trust in God's protection when faced with difficult choices. Then there's wisdom and strategic planning. Jacobed's strategic, strategic, I can't talk today. <laughs> Jacobed's strategic decision, I know you all can feel my pain, to place Moses in the Nile at a location where Pharaoh's daughter might find him shows her wisdom and careful planning. This reminds us of Esther, who wisely approached the king to save her people from destruction. Both Jacobed and Esther demonstrated a keen understanding of their circumstances, and they both used their positions and resources to influence outcomes in favor of God's people. Like them, Abigail showed great wisdom when she intervened to prevent David from taking vengeance on her foolish husband, ultimately saving her household. These women teach us the importance of using wisdom and discernment to navigate complex situations. Then, of course, there's nurturing and influential mothers. Her role as a mother is echoed in the stories of several biblical women who shaped their children's futures. Rebecca influenced the course of her son Jacob's life by helping him secure Isaac's blessing in Genesis 27. Rachel was instrumental in the birth of Joseph, who would later become a key figure in Egypt. Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, was also a strong influence on her son's prophetic mission. And we see that in Luke 1, 57 to 66. These women highlight the profound impact a mother's guidance can have on their children's lives and their destinies. Jacobed, like Mary, the mother of Jesus, was chosen for divine purpose. Mary's humble acceptance of her role as the mother of the Messiah parallels Jacobed's acceptance of the challenge to protect and raise a future deliverer of Israel. Similarly, Rahab, a Canaanite woman, played a crucial role in Israel's conquest of Jericho by hiding the spies and aligning herself with the God of Israel. Both Jacobed and Rahab were women who found themselves in unexpected roles, chosen to fulfill God's purposes. Their stories remind us that God often works through unlikely individuals to achieve his divine plans. Then there's hospitality and service. Mary and Martha of Bethany were well known for their hospitality and service to Jesus. While Martha was busy with serving, Mary sat at Jesus' feet listening to his teachings. This story highlights the balance between action and contemplation. Like Martha, Jacobed was active and pragmatic in her approach to saving Moses. But 
like Mary, she also demonstrated a deep trust and reliance on God. Their stories encourage us to find a balance between doing and being, serving actively while maintaining a posture of faith and trust. Finally, Jacobed shares a spirit of endurance and hope with Ruth, who remained faithful to Naomi and her God despite personal loss. Ruth's determination to stay with Naomi and build a new life in Israel mirrors Jacobed's determination to save her son and protect his future. Similarly, Eve, the first woman, represents the beginning of the human story and the endurance of life through many trials. Jacobed's story, like those of Eve and Ruth, reflects the enduring hope that God's promises will be fulfilled no matter the circumstances. Jacobed's life and actions are woven into the larger narrative of women in the Bible who demonstrated faith, courage, wisdom, nurturing care, and hope. These women from various backgrounds and various circumstances each played a vital role in God's unfolding story. Whether through quiet faith, bold action, or wise decision-making, their stories remind us of the power and influence of women in God's plan. Jacobed stands among these remarkable women, encouraging us to trust God, to act courageously, and to live faithfully in whatever circumstances we find ourselves. By reflecting on Jacobed's qualities and comparing her to other women in the Bible, we see a pattern of God using ordinary individuals to accomplish extraordinary purposes. Let their stories inspire you to step into your own role with faith and courage, trusting that God can use your life in ways beyond what you imagine. I want to thank you so much for tuning into this episode. I truly appreciate your support. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the show on your preferred podcast platform. This way you'll get updates as new episodes become available. And if you feel so inclined, please leave us a review and share the show with someone you know. Your feedback and your recommendations help us grow and reach more people with insights and teachings from a biblical perspective. Stay blessed, friends, and see you next time.